hour. But first, the damning report by the Wall Street Journal, the paper revealing a dozen diplomats sent a confidential memo to Secretary of State Anthony Blinken on July 13th, warning that the Taliban was rapidly gaining ground and Kabul was vulnerable to collapse. It is the latest in a series of reported warnings the Biden administration potentially ignored as American forces left and the insurgents swept through the country with ease. A former CIA counterterrorism chief also advised the president's campaign Kabul would crumble within days with a depleted American presence. But in an interview released just yesterday, President Biden claimed he was never told that such a rapid collapse was possible. Watch. Number one. As you know, the intelligence community did not say back in June or July that, in fact, this was going to collapse like it did, number one. They thought the Taliban would take over, but not this quickly. But not this quickly, not even close. But and your top military advisors warned against withdrawing on this timeline. They wanted you to keep about 2,500 troops. No, they didn't. It was split. That, that, that wasn't true. That wasn't true. Kaylee, you have served in an administration and understand the inner workings of intel communications to the commander in chief. So what are Americans supposed to make of this behind the scenes disaster? That the Biden administration was caught entirely flat footed and the obvious question is why. Uh, there is a new report out, Politico magazine, based on 33 different sources about the last five days leading up to the fall of Afghanistan. It's really interesting reporting. It says that Wednesday morning there was a ebullient mood in the White House. They had had back-to-back -back legislative victories as the uh, infrastructure bill passed the Senate. And reportedly, President Joe Biden, Vice President Harris were in the pro private Oval Office dining room. I sat there with President Trump many times. It's a very casual atmosphere. They watched the vote tally come in in the Senate, and then they they pumped their fist into the air in victory and prepared to go on vacation. The out-of-office replies started popping up in the White House. We know the press secretaries did. And then all of a sudden, there was a Wednesday evening secret meeting, is, that's how it's described, with the president, with National Security Advisor, uh, with Milley, where they were told that Afghanistan is crumbling faster than expected. Follow that up, there's a Thursday morning 7.30 a.m. meeting in the Situation Room again where it was decided that U.S. troops would have to go in, the embassy evacuated, and that was described in this piece as the oh bleep moment. My question is, why was this a moment that caught them by surprise? When you have 23 people in the U.S. embassy sending a dissenting cable, we know Blinken read that cable, why was our commander-in-chief the very last to find out that this could happen? It's a question that I think needs to not just be asked, but investigated. Steve, Kaylee asks an absolutely vital question here, and all of this on top of months and months of plans submitted to this administration about the safe evacuation and preparation there of the people in Afghanistan, United States and allies as well. What are we to make of either the ignoring of that or the incompetence in assessing it? Well, it's all of those things, but worse than that, it is clear now from these leaks that we're getting, because, of course, all the people in the administration, in the, in, the, in, the, in the State Department, in the military, in the Defense Department, the intelligence agencies who Biden has been throwing under the bus for the last week, they're sick of it. They're saying, no, we did warn you. And so what do we learn from this? We learn that Biden, the guy that was going to bring truth after Trump's lies, has lied and lied and lied again about this. He lied in April when he made the announcement. He lied in July when he was pressed on the intelligence. He lied on Monday in that speech. He lied on Wednesday to George Stephanopoulos. He's going to lie again within the hour. Of course he will, because that's all he's got left. And it's not just on this that he's lying. He's lying on everything that we were told about the Biden administration. They said, oh, they're going to bring competence. We've got chaos. Chaos in Afghanistan, obviously, chaos at the border. They told us that America is back. What have we got now? We've got the allies around the world feeling more betrayed by America than ever in history. They told us they would bring empathy. Empathy. This guy, when he was asked about those poor, desperate people falling to their deaths from an American plane, his first response is, oh, it was four days ago. Have you ever heard anything so cold and cruel and callous? The whole Biden image pumped up by the media, all of it was a lie. This man, this man is a despicable, contemptible human being. And now we're seeing the truth about him. 
honestly, if there is any justice or accountability for the shame and humiliation he's brought on this country, on the presidency, he should resign in disgrace right now. Harris, as Steve put it, from promises of competence to chaos inside the administration and out. Well, not just promises of competence. I want everybody, competence rather, I want everybody just to lean in a little bit on, on where Steve Hilton started there and remind him, remind everyone of how proud we are to call ourselves fellow Americans. Steve, you just became an American, a U.S. citizen. Yes. And, and, and hearing this from you, especially with citizenship that is shared now, I would assume by your home country, they feel betrayed in England in a exactly. way that is indescribable. Okay, the French troops are on the ground right now looking for French citizens. Our people are being told that they have to stay pinned into that perimeter while Taliban terrorists and thugs hold the perimeter around Kabul airport because some genius decided that it was a good idea to close off other avenues for Americans to get out of hell. And let's call Afghanistan mm -hmm. what it is right now. That's what it is. So we don't have Bagram. But, but it really starts to get ratcheted up when you hear what Congressman Brian Mass, who served valiantly on the ground with so many of his comrades valiantly on the ground in Afghanistan, um, and looking back now at what could be a hostage-taking situation if we don't get every single American out. And what he said was, well, they're also going to go to those places that we abandoned, and they're going to learn how to do stuff. What in the world are they going to find at Bagram? We know we left stuff behind in other areas. We got to go back in now. And I've had generals tell me, Steve especially saying this to you, that this will be a new engagement in terms of pushing yeah. the Taliban back. And it's going to take a lot of people on the ground to do that. You don't think we're going to need the British and the French and other allies to do that? Wow. What are we doing? And I don't mean us. I mean the White House. And Molly Harris mentions, for one, for example, Bagram Air Base. We know that some of these decisions, from what we're hearing now, were for an optic standpoint. But the criticism for President Biden is certainly coming from all sides. And it's sort of uh, rare to find even one person that is defending right now his fumbling and, again, the flat-footedness that this administration was caught on. There's no defense for how we're handling for how we're handling this exit from Afghanistan. President Trump yesterday came out with a statement. He said, when leaving Afghanistan, we should have brought out all of the Americans first. Then we should have brought out all of our equipment. Then we should have bombed our bases and finally bring back the military. He, he said doing the opposite just makes no sense. So these leaks from intelligence agencies and Defense Department officials are interesting, but I'm a little bit reluctant to put too much credence into them because I saw how leaks were manipulated in the previous administration. The reality is that the entire military and State Department complexes really did a bad job for decades with Afghanistan, and they lied to the American people about how, how well things were going in Afghanistan. That's why the American public has been demanding the departure from Afghanistan. But President Biden is responsible for the completely incompetent manner in which he did that. This report from the Wall Street Journal, which is based on anonymous sources, suggests that President Biden was lying or that his national security team was also incompetent. We know that General Milley, who spends all of his days lecturing Congress on critical race theory, is not doing his job on what he's actually supposed to be doing. And there needs to be accountability. This is a global embarrassment. This is a this is a huge problem, and this did not need to happen. A rolling humiliation, Kayleen. Final thoughts? Yeah. Emily, it's interesting. So when you look at that reporting from the Wall Street Journal, 23 people in the U.S. Embassy warning about a few things. Number one, they say that the Taliban will make rapid territorial gains. Number two, use tougher language, State Department, in describing what is happening. We are seeing translators murdered, women murdered. Use tougher language. Call it what it is. Number three, they said, let's get the list of Afghans who helped us in their special immigrant visas in advance. This was all communicated on July 13th in that cable. And number four, they said, let's start the evacuation flights on August 1st before we pull out the military. Why were all of these four common sense steps largely exactly. ignored? There must be a congressional investigation because we know the Secretary of State read it. Did he communicate it to President Biden? Did President Biden ignore it too? We have to get answers.
That's absolutely right. And it was a confidential too, memo, not classified. So there was no issues about the classification status at all. Certainly many eyes read it.